Okay, you guys, I'm gonna start with this. I recorded this whole thing with a microphone and found out the microphone was turned off. So this is gonna be a lot of me doing a voiceover. Some of it I caught, but most of it I didn't. So we're gonna head out right now and we're gonna go to my junk pile and we are going to find the horseshoes that I need. It is a beautiful day outside today and a lovely day to go through all of my scrap steel. So here it is, some live edge pieces, a scrap steel rack. I have lengths of odd sizing materials, aluminum, but here's where all the goodies sit. These are all my buckets of scrap steel that I collect. I mean, you just never know when you're going to need something like this. There's so many little trinkets that I've just collected over the years because you never know when you want to make a coffee table out of any of these tiles of things. This spring, you know, all these little trinkets from all these different ranches and all these different old shops and everything. I just absolutely love all the neat things that you can find. But let's look in my buckets and see if I can find these horseshoes. This is the bucket. This is the bucket where I've kept all my horseshoes. I have so many different shapes and sizes of horseshoes. I bought some brand new ones for some old art that I used to do when I was doing a lot of horseshoe stuff, uh, Christmas time and everything like that. So I have many different shapes and sizes, but what I want to find is my pony shoes. These are the little pony shoes that I buy. They are just tiny and they are perfect for little projects just like this one. I'm gonna bring inside a couple extra ones just in case I need them for bits and pieces or in case I feel like making another belt buckle. Today might even be the day I get to finally open the door to my shop as the weather is warm enough to be able to get some fresh air into the space. I'm going to do my best to remember anything that I was saying while I did this, but what I was saying here was that everything that I'm doing in my shop, all the ways that I do things, are the way that they work for me. So be nice, don't judge me on how I do these things. This is what works for me. This is how I'm wanting to show you how I do these things. So make sure you're kind in your comments. So right now, I am going to have to dig out this anvil. I only use this for odd jobs. I know I need a piece of log for it. I've been searching for that. I still don't have one, so right now, I'm just gonna put it onto my table. So this customer sent me an image of what it is that they were looking for. Not the same belt buckle as the one I'm wearing, but to look like this from the show, Mr. Ed. This is such a neat little project. It's gonna be super easy to do. So just a matter of getting all my pieces cut properly so it's not going to be too big and bulky that it's going to be a nice size to actually wear on a belt. So the one thing I want to make sure of is that this belt buckle is not going to be too wide. Uh, making two letters, it's going to be two separate pieces. I'm going to have to cut them down. Whereas the one I'm wearing, I was able to use two whole size horseshoes and just push them in as to where I needed them. Mine's about four and a half inches wide, which is still a little big. I'm not a big person, so this does sit quite big on me. Uh, but for this one, I wanna make it no bigger than the one that I'm wearing. So I'm gonna mark on the table four and a half inches and just make sure that I don't make this bigger than four and a half inches. What I'm gonna have to do for this is cut the tips of these off and I'm going to cut them right where the lines are in order to shrink the size down of these letters so they're not going to be so wide. And the nice thing about cutting off these tips is that I can actually use them for the centerpiece for when I'm making the, the letter E and the letter D. So to mark those things where I need them to be and then be able to use those pieces for the whole belt buckle rather than cutting off pieces of other horseshoes. So I'm gonna mark my lines here and I'm gonna clamp it to the table and I'm gonna cut this.
A couple things I want to make note of is I am going to wear myself some earplugs. Even when you're doing things really, really quickly, I think it's so important that you wear proper ear protection. I started welding 25 years ago, and that was back when PPE wasn't uh, kind of forced upon you in job sites. And so I never wore earplugs. And now I am actually 70% deaf in my left ear, and it is quite annoying. So I always make sure that I have proper ear protection for any job, big or small, that I'm doing in here. Okay, so a couple other things that I want to make note of is when I'm grinding and welding and all that kind of stuff, I tend to have sparks direct one spot. And so in all of the legs of my jeans and coveralls and everything, I tend to get big holes right in the right where my leg sits. So I found these leather aprons and they are amazing. This one is dovetail, it is made for women, but it's pretty handy because it protects your pants from any sparks, any grinding, any welding. Uh, you have some pockets and so it's just really, really nice. Uh, and then there is my zip cut. As you can see, I do not have a guard on here. I have been doing this for a very, very long time, so I know how to use my grinder properly. Yes, I understand. They can crack and they can break and all of those things. Um, but for some certain jobs, I do know what I'm doing. So if you are new to using a grinder, then I absolutely will remind you to keep your guard on. Always wear a face shield, um, you know, safety glasses, hand protection, all of those kinds of things. So my piece is now cut. Um, I cut it right on the lines with the grooves in this horseshoe. And I can use this little tip as the center for my E. The only thing about it right now is it is quite tall, so I want to shrink it down. So I am going to hold it with a pair of ice grips, and I am going to hit it with a hammer a few times in order to get it the height I need it to be. I always suggest that when you are using your anvil and you are hitting something with a hammer that you use a pair of ice grips to hold onto it. Because if you're holding it with your hand, I mean you're hitting a piece of metal with a piece of metal on a piece of metal, it is not going to feel good for your hand. So always use a set of ice grips, uh, it just saves uh, that, all that vibration from your hands. Also, make sure you're wearing safety glasses when you're hitting things with a hammer. You never know what's going to break off and fly into your face. Okay, so now that I've hammered that down, you can see it's not as tall as the original horseshoe, so that's a lot better for what it is that I'm looking for. So with the little middle piece in there, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to take this other one and I'm going to cut the same lines so that each letter is fairly symmetrical. So I'm going to cut this piece. Now this piece is cut. Uh, I'm going to give it a few smacks of the hammer so it matches the same height as the other letter. Okay, so I think that this should be all right. So I am going to probably have to cut an end piece to make this. You know, I could probably make that fit with weld. So if you were to look at it right now, I'm okay with filling things in with weld. So if I were to, to zap that with wire feed, you know, zap that with wire feed. I don't need to spend too much finicky time making any of that come together or be perfect because you can always fix it with a weld. You gotta grind it up anyways, right? So this is a little bit too big right now. So I think what I might do is still cut these down one more size so I can shorter in length. I think that it is okay in the height of it I think that will be okay for a belt buckle, but I'm gonna cut it along the ends, probably right in the center of those two lines on both of them and see how that looks.
So I have these cut down, but now that I'm looking at it, I do see that these need to be hammered down just a little bit just to make them a little more even. So I'm gonna smack this with a hammer a couple times just so it fits a little bit better. I'm not a huge fan of these Mastercraft vice grips. The release on them always gets stuck and it makes it so hard to release. It really drives me nuts. I'm gonna have to upgrade those one of these days. Now, I could probably get away with using one of these smaller pieces. For that, and for that. So that's a much better size for a buckle. Once I get this all welded together, and ground up. And so that right now is four and a half inches. So that's perfect. I am going to use one of these little tail bits instead for both the letters. Uh, they just fit nicer. But for the letter E, I have cut the original length off and I need to take off a little bit. So bring up my vise and give it a quick trim. Now we get to do all the welding. This machine is such a great machine. This is the Miller 350P and I have absolutely loved it. The nice thing about this one, you can hook up the Python gun, which I have for it, or a spool gun for when you're doing a lot of long lengths of aluminum. Uh, for weld settings, they have this weld chart in here and I actually follow it pretty closely. Um, you know, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm welding something thinner to a thicker material, then maybe I'll adjust the heat um, if, if I need to change for spatter, any of that kind of stuff. But I find that these settings are actually very good. I think I'm babbling about my other welder that I have there, the XMT 350, which is also very good. Um, but I prefer using this one. This one's just a little smoother. It's a little easier to move around. So for me, I use a 75-25 gas mix, which is great. I'm using 035 wire, so I am going to use the settings for quarter inch, which I believe it is 19 volts and 334 wire feed speed. So I'm going to set it for that. I'm also gonna change my gloves. I absolutely love working in these Milwaukee gloves, but I do find that they burn up fairly quickly when you use them while you're welding. So, welding gloves it is for this job. I also like to take my MIG pliers and then just give the tip of this a really good clean. If you're not using a nozzle dip or anything like that, the spatter can get built up inside there pretty bad, and sometimes it'll block your gas and make for a porous weld, and that just gets frustrating, so. A good clean tip and then you can clean the top of it and I like to have a fresh end of wire so I snip the end of the wire and then we're ready to go. Now let's get welding. So I've welded all the spaces, uh, there's no gaps or any openings or anything like that. Um, you have just enough weld on there so that you can grind everything flat and make for a really nice cleanup with the flapper disc. Alrighty, so I'm happy with this letter. I have it ground down flat, so now I'm going to do the same to the letter E. So 
now what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use some horseshoe nails, just cut the, the stubby part off the end, and then I'm going to use it to attach it on the underside so that you get the separation of the letters. Uh, so, because I don't want to have them tacked right together. I think that's just going to be a little bit too close. So if I can have some horseshoe nails on the inside, that just keeps them separated a little bit. I think that that would look nice. And then I also use the horseshoe nails for doing the, um, the part that goes into the hole of your belt. So I'm going to grab a couple of them. So I've grabbed a couple horseshoe nails for what I'm going to use for everything. These are your horseshoe nails. I like to cut off these top bits uh, so they're just really, really flat. They make it great. Lucky me, I found this piece that I had made a while back uh, that I use for the part for the belt to go on to. Just two horseshoe nails that I've bent the ends and then just actually tacked them together. And then I can just grind it all nice and clean and it's actually like the perfect size for fitting your belt in and it's not too big or bulky. So I really like to use these horseshoe nails for both parts. I will also take the end of one of these, I will cut just the top of it right off and I'll take a grinder and I will cut it so it's almost like a hook in order to go into your belt. That way it won't pop off of your belt. So I'm just going to take my belt buckle here and I want to compare it to this one. I really like how this one sits on my belt. So I just want to make sure that this one's made the same. As you can see, nothing sticks up too high. My belt fits in there perfectly. And even the little poker that goes into the belt hole is actually just the perfect size. So I'm going to make this one the exact same. I'm going to take two horseshoe nails and I'm going to cut them down because they are going to be what holds this belt buckle so that the letters are separated. So if I put them on That's about where I want this to sit. I'm basically just going to tack either ends of these pieces and then so then my belt buckle sits where I want it to be. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more though. I don't think this needs to be this hot. This part. Now this cleans up really nicely with just the flapper disc. I like to get all the little bits out of there, make it nice and flat. There it is. Ed looks pretty good. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to make the back piece for your belt and also the little poker that goes into the belt holes.
just going to stick my belt in there, make sure that everything fits, lines up all good. It should be pretty close to the same one in my belt buckle that I've made, but just wanted to see how it all looks when it sits on the belt. I'm going to give this a tack right about there. These horseshoe nails melt so fast, so I should turn this down, but I just want to get this tacked into place. Right there, good day. I had my safety strands on in case anybody didn't know. Okay, weld this up. So now for the poker, yes, that's the technical term. I'm gonna take this little bit of this horseshoe nail, I'm gonna shape it, give it that little bit of a hook, cut it off, and then I'm gonna weld that right on the center on the end of this buckle. I'll be able to, to shape it a little bit better. Yes. Yes. So again, this kind of thing, gotta have a steady hand. Try not to have this melt right away. Have it in the center. safety squint on. I just tacked all four corners so that thing is welded and solid. And now I'm going to clean everything up with a flapper desk.
never ever use a zip cut for grinding. As soon as you put pressure on a zip cut, that is where they blow out. That is why they break, is because they get too much pressure put on them. You know, they could be defective, you never know. Uh, so if you know how to use them properly, that's wonderful. But if you don't, then make sure you always have guard and you always use a facial. spots that have just some welding spatter on them. So I'm going to take my die grinder in there. Um, I could take a file too, but I'll take my die grinder and then just clean it up. Because we're just clear coating this, so it doesn't have to be, they want it to look rustic. So you know, you, you like those little edgy little marks, you don't want anything to be sharp to cut. Any fingers or anything, or any too deep of roots, but just having it be symmetrical for it to look really good. Um, so when you clear coat it, everything just looks like it should. This is where the handy dandy small die grinder would come in handy, but this is what I have. Right, we are all done. The buckle is complete. I have done all the finishing. I'm really happy. Got a lot of dirt on my forehead. That's what's supposed to happen. But here it is, you guys, the finished buckle. So when I'm now going to take it, I'm going to spray it with some clear coat and let it dry. And then I'm gonna give it a test fit onto my belt. Okay, so the paint is dry. I've cleaned up my shop. I've readied myself for the next job. And now we're gonna give this belt buckle a test run on my belt. Um, take a look at it, you guys. The finishing turned out really good. I'm really happy uh, with all the lines and everything. I like the smooth finish. I don't wanna see my welds. I wanna make it look like this piece was one from the get-go. Um, and on the back side, you can see how I've done this. I have this space for the belt and then this little piece for the, the belt hole. So everything is ready to go. So let's see how this goes. Oh, and in case you guys didn't notice, I have my name on the back of my belt. I made this belt about nine years ago. I did a leather making course uh, in town here and it was one of the funnest things I had done. I thought for sure that I was gonna get into leather making, but I have enough things on my plate. So that fits good, it fits perfect in my belt. I don't think it's too wide or too high or anything. I think it'll fit many different size belts. So that's great. And now we'll give it a go, see if it fits. Lovely. I put a little bit of like a hook on the end of the um, piece for the belt hole just because you want it to lock itself in place. But there it is, you guys. There is the Ed belt buckle. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I just really hope that you guys love this video. I want to be able to share all of my projects, big and small. I know this is something small. It's a great way for me to get myself out there and show you guys some of the things that I do in my workshop. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and comment and all that good stuff. Let me know what you wanna see. Let me know what you wanna watch. 
Um, stay tuned for some really fun upcoming projects I have coming up. And I hope you guys all have a lovely day.